Hey all welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren. Today, you guessed it, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the brand new VacMaster VP200 Chamber Vac. It's compact, a little cheaper than some of their larger models. This one is made for the home cook, uh, fits great on food trucks and all that. So we're going to do an unboxing and see what it looks like. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Alright guys, so I'm literally going to do the initial unboxing here. This came today. I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot of testing on it today. Uh, might just get it up and running and maybe vacuum seal a bag or two with it just to show you that it works but literally I'm just gonna do an unboxing today like I said this is the BP 200 Vacmaster came out with it this a couple months ago and are already out of stock of these I got this at a supplier <clears throat> out of Ohio that still had a few um, <clears throat> It's actually a wholesale restaurant supply place that had a couple still on Amazon as far as today goes so uh, actually they were under what Vacmaster was selling them for uh, Vacmaster sells this for five hundred and forty nine dollars and I actually got this for four hundred and seventy three dollars including shipping I did have to pay tax but um, like I said the biggest the thing with this particular unit it's one of the first true uh, chamber sealers that look like some of their other models um, that uh, Backmaster has come out with, more designed for the home or food trucks or a little bit smaller footprint, a little bit lighter. It is a dry pump, it's not an oil pump, but it is set for, like I said, more the <coughs> home user, food truck user, smaller restaurant type people um, somebody doesn't want to spend a thousand dollars on a vacuum sealer this one is right at 500 bucks I'm gonna give you a little bit closer so you can see just what it looks like inside the box here while I dig it out <clears throat> see all right so that's what it is folks you can see this is your um, hinge and you can see it's got these little pads to protect it so when you open it it holds it in place unlike the um, Backmaster VP 210 or 215 you can tell there's no or even the VAC 100 that I have from JVC there's no um, trigger mechanism here to start it when you close the lid so you're going to have to manually start this just like you do the Avid Armor so there's no automatic starting you actually have to put this down and start it manually so let's look inside see what comes with it press and hold the power button for two seconds to turn on the vacuum sealer okay that should be well you need to use that once does come with a supply of bags and your manual. All right. So, first of all, I can tell it's not not quite as deep as the um, Avid Armor vacuum uh, chamber vacuum sealer I have, um, or the Vac 100. So, since it's got the lid. Um, that has some uh, raising to it. Uh, I think it was still about the same uh, dimensions on the interior space than the Avid Armor or the VAC 100 just because of the lid. Now this lid is like a good over an inch um, plexiglass solid so 
Um, there's no way that's going to break, but it does not come with any um, kind of filler plates like the back 100 did. So you're pretty much, you could probably use a smaller cutting board or something like that to fill up the space if you wanted to do that to make it vacuum less. Now one of the things that intrigued me about this as well is it has this little clippy thing. It's supposed to hold your bags open so that they get a better vacuum. And we're going to have to kind of play around with that when we uh, figure out how this thing works. I'm going to go ahead. We got this seal bar taped up pretty good. I'll try to get this out. There we go. And it looks like it doesn't matter which way it goes in. Okay. So it just fits in there. It looks like it's a decent uh, width seal bar. So this little thing is, like I said, intriguing. So that's it. I mean, it's not a lot to it. Really, it's... Um, get you down here take a look at it it's I'm gonna go ahead and measure it so we can see just how much counter space it is going to take up I will do a video <coughs> comparing the Abbott armor and the vac 100 to this I'll kind of show all three of these right next to each other since they're all geared more towards the home user or the food truck user or small restaurant type user. You know, they're, they're all in the same or similar league. I know the VAC 100 is a little bit bigger, does have an oil pump, um, but it is cheaper and smaller than some of the other products out there. So that's, that's what comes in the box, guys. Not a whole lot. I'm going to go ahead and set this up. And then we will do a demonstration of how it works. We'll pull, um, we'll put some water, I guess, in a bag and see how it does with liquids right off the bat. But uh, very simple, not a lot to it. We're going to go ahead and try it out, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I think I got it plugged in, ready to go for our first initial run. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is like our big important um, notice here said is we're going to hold down the power button for two seconds to turn it on and off so um, looking at the manual there is no power button on here but it does say start stop and I just wanted to confirm that's what it means um, from what the manual says that is the start stop button that is power so we'll hold this down for two seconds and there you go so it has turned that on And I don't know if you can hear that. It is much louder than the VAC 100. Just um, warming up there, and even the Avid Armor. It does make a little bit more startup noise. <clears throat> now, if you, in case you can't see the uh, panel here, zoom up. Okay, there you go. It has several different buttons. Um, a vac, a mode uh, indicator, high, middle, low. So I guess low vacuum, middle vacuum. Um, the, yeah, the high setting is 60 seconds, the middle is 20 seconds, the low is 9 seconds. Okay, so I guess that's the vacuum settings. Um, the seal button is here. So I guess that's if you're just going to seal a bag, you can hit that. And then the marinate button is here. To um, If you're going to use it for a marinade function. This is your seal time adjustment. I usually, this is set at six seconds. I usually only do like five seconds. Because if you go too long on a seal time, it can burn through the bag. So, so they're very basic. Um, button controls so you can't really adjust to an exact vacuum time like you can 
on the VAC 100 and the Avid Armor, but we'll do a little comparison on that down the road. But I'm going to use the low setting just for the fact that I'm going to be vacuum sealing water here, and water boils uh, pretty quick in a vacuum chamber because of the uh, the vacuum will make the water boil at a lower temperature. So that's what the front panel looks like, guys. I'm going to open you back up here and just show you what we got. I've got just a little bit of water in a smaller bag. This seal bar will do a 12 inch bag. So it looks like it'll do like a 12 by 13 or 14 inch bag and no problem. And of course you can do um, smaller bags of course, but about the max you'll do is, is a 12 by 14 bag. So we're going to go ahead and close this up and remember we're not, it's not automatic. I'm going to go ahead and hit back. Well, it doesn't look like it's vacuuming. Well, given that I had to actually sit on top of that lid for it to get a vacuum, I'm not very happy with that. I'm going to have to see if there's a way to adjust that gasket because it looked like to me it was not um, right here. It's not actually getting a good seal down there. So I'm going to have to look at that. It might need to be tightened down here. So it looks like that might be a little loose. And it also didn't get all the air out of there. I know I only had it at nine seconds and that was probably part of it. But um, it did seal it. Not a huge seal. But it did get some of the air out. So I guess I'm going to have to play around with this thing for a little bit and just kind of see maybe I have to make some adjustments to the gasket or maybe this bar is a little set too high or something like that and just kind of see what what the issue is with why it uh, didn't seal. I'll be back. All right guys, so I'm going to do a bag of water again, but I'm going to do it on medium this time instead of low and I'm gonna kind of see like I said I think this seal of this gasket might need to be stretched out a little bit more um, just from shipping that doesn't really seem to be catching in a couple spots so you might want to um, when you get this check out the uh, the gasket all around on the top and just kind of pull it out so you make sure you get good contact with your um, edge here because that's where I can see it. Yeah, I can see these corners are not really laying down flat so that's where I got to kind of hold this down it's not that bad, big of a deal you know I can go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and press the start so just to kind of put some weight on it for it to get going seems to do all right now and you can see the needle is turning. And this is a bag of water again. So the only problem I have doing it at medium is that it does run it longer in a tighter vacuum. So that water is going to boil in there. Kind of show you close up. 
it's already starting to bubble. already so I know it's got a good vacuum in there see those bubbles you don't want to do this on high because you'll get a really big bubble yeah it looks like we got a much better seal on it this time like I said, I think that gasket just may need a little bit of nudging when you first get it. Look at that. Now we got all the air out of it. Completely sealed. Nice, fairly wide seal there. I think the Avid Armor has got a little bit more, and I know the VP or the VAC 100 has got more. But, um, but completely sealed. No issues with that. Like I said, check it out. Um, this this gasket here, uh, make sure you check these rear corners because that's where, it, this this one especially, I mean, I just kind of made sure I pulled it out some from the top of the lid to make sure that it got a good contact on the edges here so that it could pull a good uh, vacuum. So once that vacuum pump starts getting a vacuum in the chamber, you can pretty much let go because it's going to continue to pull that vacuum down. But um, all right guys, I did do a couple more tests here um, on the high vac function and uh, it did much better. I still had to put a little bit of pressure on the lid. I think the gasket is the main issue on this. You got to kind of make sure it, you pull it out a little bit and make sure you get a good seal around the edge with, between the edge of the sealer and the lid. So um, that might be something that goes away. I don't think it was the vacuum pump or anything else uh, like that. So, um, and that's okay. I mean, if I have to put a little bit of pressure on it to, to make it work, it's still gonna, still gonna do its job. But I'm gonna go ahead and do some other tests. I'm gonna do a comparison between the VAC 100 from JBR and also the Avid Armor chamber sealer that I have. And then I'll do another video down the road. But thanks for watching. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you follow the Fire and Water Cooking YouTube channel. And make sure you subscribe to the Fire and Water Cooking podcast. I'll see you on the next Fire and Water Cooking video. Thanks, guys.